In this lesson, we're going to show you how to weatherize the underbelly of a mobile home. We will be covering five things we do, and these include insulating the underfloor cavity, sealing openings in the underfloor cavity before we insulate, uh, adding pipe insulation to exposed pipes, installing a ground cover to prevent uh, moisture problems in the house, and evaluate whether we need any more ventilation in the skirting uh, for the underfloor area. When an installer arrives on site to weatherize a mobile home, they'll, they'll find basically no difference between a single wide or a double wide, except that the double wide is twice the job. Oftentimes there's uh, uh, accessibility difficulties uh, because of how a mobile home might be sitting on the foundation and those will have to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. There's always some belly uh, board or belly wrap repair to be done. Uh, one for uh, accessibility uh, to get at the ducts to fix them or uh, to repair the belly wrap uh, to hold up the insulation that we're planning to install in the uh, underfloor area. Our installer Ross is going to go ahead and patch the underbelly in preparation for installing insulation. The, the underbelly material here happens to be what we call a hard pan and uh, it's, a, it's sort of a board material and we are patching a hole in the, in, in the underbelly material in order to, in the belly board so that the insulation will stay up inside there once we blow the insulation in. We made this hole here earlier to access uh, some duct sealing that we did and so we need to replace this uh, belly board material here uh, with something to hold up the insulation. What we're going to use for this uh, belly patch here is we are going to use a piece of sort of a Tyvek material building wrap and this material is permeable, moisture will, uh, vapor, water vapor will move through it. Uh, he's pre-cut this, he's pre-cut a few patches for himself and he's going to, he's, in, he's, he's put an adhesive up uh, on the belly uh, board material and now he's going to embed his patch in that adhesive and then he's going to use a mechanical fastener to uh, assure that the patch uh, will stay in place once we've installed our insulation. The insulation goes in roughly at a pound and a half per cubic foot, so um, this patch has to hold a little weight, not a lot of weight, but it, it, it does need to be uh, durable and uh, we want our insulation to stay in place for uh, the life of the building and uh, this will help the insulation stay in place and, uh, and also will protect the insulation if the mobile home is moved when it travels down the road. He's just using a typical T50 stapler here and he's stapling up in the, through the patch into the belly, the hard belly material. We usually say we like to add approximately, you know, a staple every three to four inches. Uh, it's a combination of the glue and the staples that, uh, the adhesive material that, that makes the uh, patch stay in place. Now we can patch uh, the belly material, the, this belly board with a rigid material. It depends on what you have available, but we could use a similar material such as uh, asphalt impregnated sheathing. We could also use plywood. We could use duck board. Basically it just has to be durable, durable enough, heavy enough to uh, hold up our insulation material. Our installer, Lee, is uh, working to seal uh, any holes in the floor before we insulate the under floor. Uh, it's very important that an installer uh, check the floor of the home uh, before insulating. 
We, what we don't want to happen is to fill this cavity under the tub with insulation. Uh, it wastes insulation. Also, we like the, we get other benefits from sealing that hole. We uh, keep air out of the building. Um, we keep any moisture that might come up from underneath out of the building. And we keep any insulation uh, from uh, during our insulation of the underbelly, we keep that insulation out of the house. So Lee has used some rigid materials there and then he's filling in around the rigid materials with uh, a, a one part foam. Uh, we could have used a Tyvek there or anything that will basically keep the insulation out and it's uh, added benefit to keep out air also to help the air leakiness of the shell. Lee is wearing his personal protection equipment, some eyeglasses and some uh, rubber gloves to keep the foam off his hands and the foam out of his eyes. When installers uh, insulate our, and take care of our underfloor, underbelly in a mobile home, they are essentially making the space below the underbelly cooler and therefore we run a high risk of our exposed water pipes in that uh, underfloor area run a high risk of, of freezing. So we're going to go ahead and insulate uh, the pipe. Now Jake has gone ahead and uh, sized the pipe wrap first. He cut it and now he's installing the pipe wrap on the pipe. The, this, this has an R value of about R3 and uh, it's enough to keep exposed water pipes from freezing. So he's installed the pipe wrap on the pipe and now he's just going to take a wrap of uh, electrical tape around the pipe to make sure that it stays in position uh, after, stays on the pipe after we leave. Uh, different People approach this uh, taping in different ways, but this is, is a method that's worked for us pretty well. He's just running a spiral around there, and that's going to make sure that that pipe wrap stays on that pipe uh, for the life of the building. Durability-wise, we must, again, insulate all of our exposed piping in the underfloor area uh, when we, after we insulate our, our underbellies. Jake is finishing up our ground vapor barrier here uh, in, in our underfloor below our underbelly. It's very important to uh, get a ground vapor barrier down. As you can see there's it's quite moist under here and we do not want that moisture to get up into the building. So Jake uh, is unraveling some plastic, uh, six mil black plastic that he has to uh, cover the ground. Uh, we usually install that with a two foot overlap uh, to adjacent plastic. Uh, we want to cover 100% of the ground when we're working under here. Uh, we don't want to leave bare spots because that'll uh, allow moisture to evaporate out of the ground and, and uh, possibly get into the house or affect our, uh, the structure of our building. Um, having a good ground vapor barrier uh, under your house also uh, helps you evaluate whether you need uh, added ventilation under the home. Uh, this, this ground vapor barrier should work well here. We, we do have water moving across the building site here, but we don't have pooling water. And so we should be in pretty good shape here with this, with this uh, ground vapor barrier under this home on this site. This should work well to keep the moisture out of the building and uh, provide better durability for the structure. All right, our installer Jake is getting ready to insulate the underbelly of the mobile home. Uh, he's going to get the machine ready right now and, he's, and get the uh, hose over to the, where we're going to work. He's connecting the hose at the machine and he's going to bring the 
uh, insulation hose that brings the insulation from the machine to the to the underbelly and he's going to uh, the orange cord there is the remote remote cord and he's going to go ahead and get those in position and get ready to uh, insulate this underfloor it's uh, you know quite a bit of hose sometimes and it looks like he's he uh, getting ready to go our uh, installer is getting ready to access the underbelly here he's cutting through uh, our hard belly board that we have on this underbelly uh, some underbellies it's a fabric and all you'd have to use is a knife and cut the fabric but this one's got the hard belly board so he's using a sheetrock saw to get access uh, to the void there he's kind of moving a little bit of the existing insulation out of the way uh, checking out a few things moving things uh, so it's easier to get his hose up into the underbelly our installer is getting ready to uh, insulate the underbelly and he's putting our flexible uh, belly hose up into the into the belly now he's he's trying to find the space in between the joists uh, the, the joists on this mobile home run the short distance and so he's finding in between the joist over the steel beam and he's going to put the flexible hose up there and now he'll go ahead and turn on the remote get some insulation flowing um, takes a little while to get it started and now he's starting to fill the underbelly he's going to work to one side and work towards the middle and then he will uh, transition and work to the other side after uh, the other one side fills it's a uh, interesting process he's uh, slowly works the hose out as the belly uh, underbelly fills and now he's gonna switch over and insulate get that hose up into the other side of the joist system uh, out over the outriggers the joist system is only uh, six inches deep and um, so it fills up pretty quick outside the steel beam, but as he comes, as he pulls the hose back to the middle, he tends, it tends to fill, there's a bigger void there and it takes a little longer to fill that area up. We're looking to get about a one and a half to two pound uh, density of insulation in here. One and a half to two pounds per cubic foot and we do this by calculating our volume and coming up with a target bag count and monitoring our work as we as we do it and it looks like he's getting pretty close to being full in that area so he's checking checking and he looks about done in that spot great Now Jake will go ahead uh, later, someone will come back through here and do a, do a belly patch and that can either do, be with a, a rigid material or a, a cloth material on this particular belly but in a flexible belly we'll have to patch it with a, a flexible material. Finally, uh, we're going to talk about under, underbelly ventilation. Uh, underbelly ventilation is, is needed uh, occasionally uh, to remove moisture from under, underneath the home. Typically we install uh, foundation vents uh, in a home to keep, get air, out, uh, air moving through underneath the home to keep moisture from uh, attacking the structure of the home as well as uh, the inside of the home. So uh, in a mobile home is the same. We want to make sure that moisture doesn't build up under the home and cause durability problems. So uh, we will look at that, uh, an installer can evaluate that on a case-by-case -case basis. Typically we'll find that the underbelly of a home is already ventilated, but if it is an extremely wet site, we may want to add more under, underbelly ventilation 
to uh, ensure durability and good air quality inside the house. In this lesson, we talked about the, the five things we can do to improve the energy performance of an underbelly of a mobile home. That was insulation, adding insulation, sealing holes in the floor before we insulate, adding pipe insulation, uh, adding ground cover, and evaluating, evaluating the need for more ventilation in the underfloor area. When the underbelly is done correctly, weatherized correctly, the homeowner benefits with increased comfort and energy savings.